It is a scientific fact that the sun is the main driver of planetary climate, and the measurements are clear. The sun is becoming hotter, brighter. It has been slowly increasing thermal output in the last hundred years. The sun is too hot. Get me Santa Claus. Can Santa destroy the sun? A perennial favorite among climate denial myths is that the Earth's current warming is due to changes on the sun. One of the most famous and egregious examples of how these distortions are manufactured is the movie The Great Global Warming Swindle. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. Solar activity, they found, rose sharply to around 1940, fell back until the 1970s, and then started to rise again. The film's director, Martin Durkin, was taken to task for numerous inaccuracies by Australian Broadcasting's Tony Jones in an epic deconstruction that will be studied by journalism students for decades to come. Well, once again, we asked our climatologists to have a look at this section of the film and to comment on it. They stop the record because they don't mention it falls when the temperature continues, so it's classic. Pick the section of the record that fits your preconception and then leave out the inconvenient parts. The graph conveniently stops at 1980 when the temperature starts to rise much more rapidly and the solar activity decreases, the opposite of what they claim. Why didn't you just continue that graph on to the present day because there are graphs available which do that. It's instructive to watch as Durkin's response quickly devolves into rambling evasions, eye rolling, and arm waving. Well, firstly, the graph that we were using was um, created by Professor Fries Christensen from the Danish Space Agency. So it went completely. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. 25 years ago. Yeah, and it was in a period where we're, a part of the program where we're talking about, it was a historical part of the program where we're talking about key discoveries in, uh, uh, in the history of, you know, recent history. I'm told. Shall, I, shall I tell you what happens exactly. after 1980? The temperature continues to rise very sharply. Solar activity falls off in the other direction. Now, that would have been very hard to explain in your film, wouldn't it, if you'd actually used the modern data. Well, I mean, the graph that we used from Fries Christensen was the graph that he published in a very famous paper that sort of came out and was in part of the program that we were talking about. The history of people's understanding of what the show was The section, as you say, is based on his work, but when he and his colleagues saw your graphs and the way in which you'd use them in the program, they felt compelled to correct you. They wrote this, that their latest studies had explicitly concluded that after 1985, temperature continued to rise, just as I said, while the sunspot cycle length flattened out and thus no longer correlated with surface temperature. And they went on to say, this point was not included in the narrator's statement. The distortions and inaccuracies in Durkin's film are an embarrassment to all concerned, and I've dealt with them elsewhere. But questions about the sun's role in climate change continue. It is well known that the total irradiance of the sun has been flat or declining since the mid-20th century, as this graph from the Max Planck Institute shows. Solar activity has been flat during recent decades, while global temperatures have risen dramatically. The solar hypothesis fails to explain how temperatures continue to warm at places and times when solar effects are weakest, like at night, and temperatures are rising fastest where the sun's rays are faintest, in the polar regions. More recently, climate deniers have rolled out yet another new distortion. CERN, C-E-R-N, one of the world's largest and most prestigious centers for scientific research, has concluded that it's the sun's rays, not human activity, which controls the Earth's climate. The story comes from actual research at a European lab. There have been a series of experiments to look at possible effects of cosmic rays on Earth's cloud cover and climate. But the CERN press release materials do not support the breathless Fox News headline. 
The details are complex, and researchers have made clear that current results as yet say nothing about an effect on global temperatures. Lead scientist Jasper Kirkby was interviewed at length by the journal that published the research and spoke to that question specifically. It actually says nothing about a possible cosmic ray effect on clouds and therefore climate. More recently, NASA researcher Gavin Schmidt presented details of his team's evaluation of the issue at the American Geophysical Union. Uh, we find that that's a very small effect. Uh, so small, in fact, that it doesn't actually have any effect on climate. Cosmic rays, in fact, can be measured from stations on the ground. And historically, the influx of cosmic rays has not been shown to be related to changes in global temperature. But scientists take a much longer view of Earth's history, and a realistic assessment of cosmic ray effects over geological time is needed. Speaking to the American Geophysical Union, paleoclimatologist Richard Alley has given a clear and useful review of climate over the last three billion years that is readily available online. It is very reassuring that if you change the sun, the temperature notices. And it is very reassuring that as far back as we can see well, the sun is friendly. It just doesn't change very much. If the sun changed a lot, it would control things hugely. But it only changes really slowly or really small as far as we can tell. The records aren't as good as we'd like. There's work to be done here. But it just doesn't seem to be doing much. This one is important to carry home. People will say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, the, the, the sun doesn't change much, but the sun modulates the cosmic rays, the cosmic rays modulate the clouds, the clouds modulate the temperature, and so the sun is amplified hugely. It's really interesting hypothesis, there's really good science to be done on this, but we have reason to think it's a fine-tuning knob. Because this record, this is 60,000 years ago on the left up to today, and this is a record that is beryllium-10 in the ice core, and the beryllium-10 is made by cosmic rays. Now, the sun modulates cosmic rays, so do the magnetic field. And 40,000 years ago, the magnetic field basically zeroed out in what we call the Le Champ anomaly for a millennium or so. And when it did, the cosmic rays came screaming into the Earth system, and you see in basically all sedimentary records this peak in cosmic ray-produced nuclides. We had a big cosmic ray signal, and the climate ignores it. And it's just about that simple. These cosmic rays didn't do enough that you can see it. So it's a fine-tuning knob at best for this picture. Many climate deniers imagine a comic book universe where cosmic rays are the all-purpose fairy dust tailor-made for their storyline. We may someday find that cosmic rays can give us mysterious powers. Let us become invisible. Or be really stretchy. Or even shoot energy beams at those smarty pants elitists that make fun of us. But one thing science has told us so far is that cosmic rays in the sun are not the cause of the rapid warming of the last century. Extensive research with the most sensitive instruments fails to show solar effects that could be responsible for the changes we measure on Earth. To keep up with the story, keep coming back here where we always defend truth, justice, and the best scientific information at Climate Denial Crock of the Week. And uh, Gavin, I understand that you are an occasional viewer of the Climate Croc videos? I am. I, uh, I, I share them with all my friends. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you.